Good afternoon, dear pilgrims. This is our uh, a second meditation together um, during this uh, first day of our of our pilgrimage to uh, to um, Our Lady of Chartres from Paris, and this is the second meditation with me on the on Saturday, and this meditation would be centered on the uh, on the uh, the nature of holy angels. It's uh, rather difficult to um, to uh, explain uh, or to describe the, the angelical world, uh, obviously because there is no uh, visibility. They are pure spirits, and we have no. Uh, we can only use our own uh, words, human words and wordings, uh, to um, approach the mystery of of the angelical world. In a way, the angelical world is a, a deep mystery because invisible and purely uh, invisible. In the meantime, as we, were, we would walk, um, we uh, would discover that, uh, find out, the angels are, more, are closer to us than we think and more intimate. They are mysterious and they are intimate and like to uh, the Blessed Trinity um, dwelling in human soul. A few reflections this afternoon will help us to develop our devotion to our angels and to angels in general. I would not focus on the devotion to the guardian angel uh, now, but maybe later on in the next days. So the question today, our reflection today, would, would uh, concern the nature of the holy angels. Who are they? They appear in the Bible under different names, um, or they appear anonymously in a group. But when they receive a mission in the in the Scripture, they receive a mission to uh, towards men towards this world they are given a name and this is how we know them they've never been explained in depth who they are their very own nature is still uh, hidden to our human uh, concept our human ideas but we can approach them through uh, a better understanding of of the names they choose or they have been given by uh, the providence to intervene in the in the in the in the world in the history in our human history. Sorry. So who they are? Very simply, we answer the the question. They are uh, pure uh, spirits. That means that is to say they have no body. So, in a way, as St. Thomas says, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas says, the angels would look, uh, would look closer to, um, uh, to God, to the divinity, rather than humanity. In a way, because of their pure spirituality, they have nobody, no flesh, they resemble God uh, more than resemble men. They have no body, but they are located somewhere. They are creatures. They are individuals. We um, usually think that someone is best, is best described by his uh, visibility, how the person looks to you. And this is how you would describe uh, somebody. Who are you? And you would probably say a few things. The first elements, the first property from, come from the what you see. In the angels, it's, it's definitely, it has to be different, it must be different. Of course, it is different because you are not, you have no human, you are no visible, no physical elements to uh, describe an angel. Um, but, what they share with us, the best they share with us is 
creature. They have been created by Almighty God. And this, the fact to be cre a, create, a creature is common with the human nature and the rest of the creation, of course, but this is common sense. But we share the fact to be an effect of the very th same cause, which is, who is God. So in this prospect, in this aspect, uh, the angel is close to, um, to us. They understand us. And this is one of the spiritual um, steps we can mark at this stage. There are creature, creatures, that is to say, they are able to t teach us how to behave, how to follow the voice of God, or how to answer the call to uh, holiness, because they had this experience. This is not for now. We, uh, the angels, are close friends to us in a sense that they had their own challenge, uh, they had their own decision to make in a different way of, of, our, of, of, of our decision, which can be always changing uh, and it's quite changed, uh, changing during our life. But the angels' decision is straight, is one decision. That's for it all eternity and doesn't change forever. But here, help us, he can they endure by their own nature because their decision is so direct um, and, so, and, and intangible and unchangeable. Uh, this, the, the, this decision, such a decision, the nature of his decision does help us and bring us the grace to decide to make our own decision to love our Lord and to follow the commandments of the Church and the commandments of God. So we ask them, from their nature, the nature of their decision, firm, we ask to be faithful as uh, they are in their naturally, as they are naturally, uh, when they decide something. We know some of them have decided for evil, and most of them have decided for the best. The angels would help, as I said, us to make a good decision. Also, the angels, by their place uh, in, the, uh, in the creation, help us to understand the grandeur and the beauty of God. God has created the whole world in a sort of, uh, in a real, not just a sort of, a real harmony, a beauty. And the beauty of the world, or the creation, visible and invisible as we sing or say or recite in the creed, visible and invisible, this beauty uh, reflects uh, an, uh, an, uh, not, not in perfection, but reflects as much as possible, as much as creatures can, uh, reflects the grandeur, the splendor, the immense beauty of God um, infinite and the creation reflects this infinite creation in a, a limited uh, time and in limited beings uh, but it does reflect the beauty of God and the place of the angels is here to complete to achieve the harmony of the creation as you know in an, a piece of art or uh, on, a, on a painting or a building cannot be said, cannot be qualified beautiful if there was any uh, essential, uh, uh, only essential property missing or any element, essential element missing. This is common sense and we do understand that there is nothing beautiful with anything missing is that something is missing it cannot be said beautiful and the angels are here and this is another aspect of the presence of the angel is to manifest in their own being purely spiritual the harmony of the whole world as a succession of the beings as the hierarchy of the beings starting from the plants no spiritual just only material created animals 
uh, not spirituals as no soul, but just a body uh, able to react. And this is another level of being. You, we understand this is more perfect. The third one are men. The human race is a part of the, the chief of the visible creation because we are made of body and flesh and because we are a body and soul sorry and so uh, the soul is the master of the body and the soul is a link the first step towards the the pure uh, spirituality of god and the absolute um, uh, spirituality of the angels these men are created unlike the rest of the creation but they are spiritual in the meantime uh, so they make the sort of a, a link, the first step, to the, the world of the invisible world. And between the created mixed creatures, between uh, soul and body, flesh and spirit, and God, who is absolute infinite spirit, there must be a created spirit pure created spirit and this is the angels and you can see the angels uh, presence are uh, existing the angels are here to um, uh, to um, not to express not just to express uh, a need of of the of the souls but to express the very beauty the very harmony in the chain of the creation if they are missing uh, it would be noticeable and the, the creation would not have been so beautiful. But creation was perfect as we read in the book of Genesis. Therefore, God had to, not because he was caused, he has no cause, but God had decided to place, to create everything in a good harmony. The angels were created and this is the third aspect of their being. They are here to adore God and to enjoy his presence. This is the original plan of their creation. That's the goal assigned to the angelical creatures. And uh, divided in uh, nine choirs, as we know from angel, archangels, and etc. And their mission is first, the first mission is adoration, placed before at the throne of God in the face of the Blessed Trinity, and they adore our Lord. Uh, and uh, adore the blessed, the three person of the one uh, Trinity. Uh, adoration is the first mission of the angels, and don't get it wrong. The mission is related to his being. What the, the mission assigned to the angel comes from his very being. And this is the first one: adoration, silence, burning before in furnace, furnace uh, furnaces of charity in the, at the throne of God, as says the Apocalypse. And the second mission, which is a subsequent mission um, after the creation of Adam and Eve, because the first one was signed at the very moment they were created. And when um, the first, our first parents were created, here uh, they were sent to them to assist them, and to assist and to sustain them in their pilgrimage to um, to heaven and we know what happened unfortunately uh, our parents uh, despised the the voice of their angel uh, who um, and they listened to the voice of the evil one satan so this is the second mission of the angels they are here to assist the god in the government of the visible creation and they are here to assist uh, men, individually assist uh, souls to respond and to correspond to the invisible grace of God. We can ask this, uh, place ourselves in this mission because they assist us at every instant of our life and we could, uh, with this very short brief, understanding of uh, the mission of the angels we can definitely understand that they are here they are vital for our spiritual life vital for our pilgrimage on earth because they give the direction 
In the meantime, they push souls towards God and their sisters, and they would never ever let us down.